You could put it on your waistband. You could put it up your sleeve. Or you could just put it in your hand and let the whole world know that you were on your period and that people with vaginas bleed and there's nothing wrong with that. It's Sharon. Welcome or welcome back. If you haven't heard, I'm doing a lot of back to school related videos this season because, spoiler alert, it is back to school season. And if it's not back to school season for you, must be nice. But, anyways, this is not the first time I made one of these videos. These videos are actually probably one of you guys' favorites. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do not be afraid to. But it is period school hacks because, listen, been there, done that. Your girl has graduated. I don't have to worry about getting Mother Nature and going to class. But I know this struggle. I have been through this struggle and I feel the struggle. And I still feel it even if it's just going to the grocery store. But anyways, today I'm giving you 25 period school hacks or school period hacks, whichever order you prefer. So if you want to see more videos like this, give us a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. Make sure you are following me on my Instagram, my Twitter, and my TikTok so you have a say in my videos, get a chance to be in them, and even be shout out of the day. Now, like I mentioned, this is not my first rodeo. I do have two other videos just like this with more school period hacks. So definitely go check those out. And of course, if you'd like to see more, definitely subscribe for more. But enough about that. Go grab your notes, go grab your tea, go grab your snacks, go grab your book bag, your pads, your tampons, whatever, and let's get into this. So the first hack, I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again because it is truly my favorite hack ever. If you have a long day ahead of you and you know you can't go to the bathroom or you're afraid you won't be able to find a bathroom or you just don't like using a school bathroom because <laughs> girl, same, I would avoid that thing like the plague, wrap toilet paper and put it in your pad. The reason I say this is because when you bleed, the blood will go to the toilet paper instead of the pad first. So you will actually have a cleanish or cleaner pad if you have that toilet paper paper layer. You can also like wrap it completely around or just fold it and put it on top of your pad. If you wrap it completely around, it could help with like leakage if you kind of leak to the sides, which also definitely recommend using pads with wings to help with side leakage. I always do it just by force of habit, especially if you are a heavy bleeder and you just bleed a lot. If you want to take it a step further, instead of using toilet paper, you could use the napkins in a bathroom because those are sturdier than toilet paper because toilet paper just like crumbles, right? So you know when you wet toilet paper, it's just like psh, disintegrates. When you wet those napkins in bathrooms, they kind of like, they hold up, they don't completely fall apart. And that actually ties into my second tip, which is if you get your period and you don't have a pad, you don't have a tampon, you don't have anything and you don't have anyone that has anything or you're too afraid to ask anyone, which you shouldn't be by the way, don't worry, you'll get over it eventually. But if you are too afraid to ask or you just don't have one handy or can't find one anywhere, I definitely recommend using that same bathroom napkin, paper towel, whatever you want to call it, and using that as a makeshift pad to make it even better and add more layers. You can add toilet paper to it as well. And if you cannot find one in your bathroom, you could use a bunch of toilet paper, but I'm just saying one is definitely sturdier than the other. But also your school nurse should have period supplies. So please do not be afraid. Periods are normal. There is nothing to be embarrassed about having a period. Another one of my favorite hacks that I do all the time, that is I wear two pairs of underwear. And the reason I say that is because sometimes when I'm wearing a pad, I get a little self-conscious because I'm like, oh my gosh, what if this starts moving? What if it starts like shifting and goes to the side? I feel like whenever I'm wearing two underwears, I'm kind of like holding it in place and making sure it's secure and not moving, which you can also do by either wearing like leggings instead or like biker shorts, or you can wear two pairs of underwear and leggings or biker shorts, you know, something that's like, I don't want to say tight, but it's fitting and it's still breathable and flexible, but it still like holds it in place. It could also help hide the actual like pad lines if that's something you're nervous about, which I mean, to be honest, if you see my pad, cool, congrats. Now you know I'm on my period, you know, but if you don't want anyone to see it, definitely adding more layers could help, which that leads into my next tip or my next hack. If you're self conscious conscious about that pad outline. So a couple things you can do. You can tie a sweater around your waist, kind of like, you know, the hack when you leak, just tie a sweater, jacket, whatever, hide it. Or you can wear a longer shirt or a longer hoodie, sweatshirt, whatever that goes and covers your butt. Or you can wear a looser skirt, you know, like a skater skirt or even like leggings and shorts or like leggings and a skirt as well. Cause you know, we got to stay in that dress code, even though dress code is ridiculous and a little bit sexist. This is a great hack that I don't think too many people consider. That is do not wear wire bras. Y'all don't understand how painful wire bras are yet. And if you do, you feel me, right? When I switched my regular bras to wire free, I have never felt more alive, more free, more able to breathe. Wires hurt after some time. And when you're on your period, you're extra sensitive to pain and your boobs feel extra sensitive, which yes, by the way, that is totally normal for your chest to feel sensitive, maybe even heavy, maybe even a bit sore. So you want them to be comfortable. If you don't have wire free bras, you can 
can use sports bra instead. They're comfy, the girls are being held up, and you can breathe and it's not annoying. I've seen this hack on Facebook a lot. Not even relating to pure, it's just relating to like when you're feeling bloated or after you've ate too much. So it's this hack where you take a little hair tie and you knot it around the jeans buttons hole and then you tie your button with the scrunchie. This is a great hack to use when you are feeling very bloated and your tummy hurts and your jeans are too tight. Just use a little scrunchie hack and suddenly you can breathe a bit. But of course, I feel like this only really works if you have like a longer shirt that goes over your jeans to cover that. Like I wouldn't say go try that with like high-waisted jeans while you're wearing like a crop top or your shirt is tucked in. So make sure it's not tucked in. It's a little bit longer. But if you want to walk around like that, you know what? Power to you, sis. No shame. <laughs> Period cravings. They're a thing. Now, I do not discourage eating chocolate when you're on your period. You know, of course, like my god, I was like, girl, you can't eat too much chocolate. You gotta stay away from sugar because a lot of sugar can lead to yeast infections. Yes, sadly, that's a thing. When I found that out, I was like, what do you mean I should lay off the chocolate? Aside from that, if you have a sweet tooth and you're really craving just something sweet, go for fruits instead, you know, because they are healthier and they are sweet. I'd say either do bananas because they're really high in potassium or do watermelons because they have a lot of water to help keep you hydrated as well. So I think those are probably the two best fruits you can snack on when you're on your period. Ironically enough, I did just mention bananas being high in potassium. Bananas are also great for PMS. Bananas are high in potassium and also in B6, which can help you to retain less water, meaning you're not feeling that bloated. Now, if you have too little potassium, that can actually lead to muscle cramping. So that's basically the opposite of what you want. So you better go stack up on some bananas. Literally eat a banana every day on your period. I definitely do not think you have to hide period products, but I get it, okay? I get when you're new to your period, you're first getting your period, and you don't feel that comfortable with it yet. You will grow out of it. I hope I help you grow out of it, but that being said, for those of you out there that still want to hide your products, use like a water bottle. Not one that's see-through, of course, just like a regular dark water bottle, and hide your products in there. That being said, you can also hide your products in like your pencil pouch. I have like gone as far as just taking my binder and holding my binder while I have my backpack and my binder has a pad in it just waiting for me to go to the bathroom as a pit stop, you know? Also, you can put it anywhere on your body as well, like in your shoe, in your bra. You can put it on your waistband. You can put it up your sleeve. Or you just put it in your hand and let the whole world know that you were on your period and that people with vaginas bleed and there's nothing wrong with that. I do remember in school being very embarrassed opening my pad in the bathroom. I don't know why. There's no shame in that. I hear people fart in the bathroom, you know? If they could fart, I could open my pad, right? But if you are still working on it, you know, working on getting out of that comfort zone. I have so many solutions on opening a pad and not making that loud, obnoxious noise. So number one, just cut off the little slits like the side beforehand or open your pad beforehand. But my favorite go-to is just flush the toilet at the same time. There is nothing suspicious about a toilet flushing in the bathroom. So as it's flushing and being super loud and obnoxious, you just rip it open. I have mentioned this before. I mentioned it in my last video, which is an emergency kit for school, which by the way, definitely recommend go checking that out next, I brought up essential oils and how specific essential oils help with specific things. Like peppermint is great for headaches. So if you get a lot of headaches while you're on your period, you can buy like a little aromatherapy roll on and roll it on your wrist. You can also use lavender oil, which is really great to help you de-stress, to help you relax, to even help you calm down and supposed to help with insomnia as well. So I think those are really great, especially when you're on your period and you're very cranky and you're very moody and it's very hard to be a decent person sometimes. Try some peppermint or try some lavender. If you want to avoid not having period supplies, like let's say you get your period and suddenly you are out of tampons, you're out of pads, you can't find one anywhere. Invest in reusable period products. And the number one thing I'm going to recommend to you is a reusable pad. Yes, that's a thing. I literally vlogged my first time using a reusable pad. Also go check that video out. But aside from that, it is a cloth pad. You wear it, you wash it, you wear a new one. They hold so much blood and they are so much better for not only you, but for your wallet and for the environment and for your period. So research has shown so far that using reusable pads actually leads to like less cramps and shorter periods, which is so crazy. And the reason they think that is because pads have so many chemicals in it and those chemicals are messing with your vagina. So if you're using a cloth one, no chemicals to mess with your vagina. So think about that. If you're not into pads and you're more of a tampon girl, think about a menstrual cup, which is my next hack slash tip. The difference between a menstrual cup and a pad is kind of the obvious a pad goes on your underwear and a menstrual cup goes inside you but a bonus is you can go swimming with a menstrual cup you can't go swimming with a reusable pad you can but you shouldn't so they are a little bit on the pricier side but think about it as an investment
investment, instead of buying new supplies every freaking month or whenever you need them, you kind of just spent a lot of money once on this one supply and it lasts you a really long time. I haven't tested these out yet, but I'm just gonna throw this in here. Period panties, same concept. You can reuse them. Since I just mentioned period panties, I'm gonna throw this tip in here as well. I think this is like a, a bonus tip because I didn't originally have this planned, but I haven't done this, but I've heard it and I'm like, okay, it makes sense when you're on your period and you're scared that you're gonna leak. Instead of wearing like regular underwear, wear a bikini bottom. Thicker material, meant for water, meant for liquids. Doesn't hurt to try. I also mentioned this in my emergency kit video, but I am gonna mention it now for those of you that haven't seen it. So you know those little like hand warmers, those little packets that you buy, you shake them up, they get warm and you keep it to like warm yourself like in the cold, use it in your hands, you put it in your pockets, whatever. So there's actually like a heat pad that's like a sticker and you can tape it or stick it, whatever the term is, I guess stick it to your tummy, like right on your uterus to help with cramps. And you can wear that under your leggings, under your shirt, you can wear that to school. No one knows it's there, especially if you wear like looser clothes, which by the way, when you're on your period, try to wear looser clothes because that makes you feel more comfortable. You're not gonna feel bloated and you're not gonna feel gross and tight and like you can't breathe. So stick on the looser side to begin with. I've always said this and I will continue to say this. Exercise when you're on your period is actually really great for you and really recommended because it helps like stretch your muscles and helps to avoid cramps and alleviate cramps. But aside from that, stretch in the morning, do a little bit of yoga, get your muscles moving and wake them up. Now this of course is a bit of an obvious one, but have a period tracker and track whenever you're getting your period and it will give you an estimate of when you may get your period next. Aside from having that obvious period tracker though, I would keep like a binder or like a little calendar in my locker, in my notebook, in my planner even, write down, hey, so this is when I'm supposed to get my period, this is what I have going on that day, just so you can like mentally prepare yourself and like even physically prepare yourself, like make sure you have all the supplies you need by that date because I feel like it's different when it's on your phone and when it's like written in paper. I think like the more it's in your face, especially the more it helps to stick, if that makes sense. Avoid caffeine when you're on your period. Caffeine does not help you and can make your cramps worse. That being said, try sticking to tea, but also make sure it is caffeine-free tea. You can try some ginger lemon honey tea, or you could even make like a fruit smoothie, and then you're getting all your vitamins in, especially if you use bananas, because we know helps with PMS. So either way, tea or a smoothie, no coffee. You do not have to stick to a specific product. You can use both pads and both tampons. You can use whatever you want. You don't have to be one or the other. So that being said, on more chill days, go for a pad. On more active days, go for a tampon. But also when you are wearing a tampon, make sure that you are bleeding enough to be wearing a tampon. So there are some like tampon horror stories, which I have a couple on my channel, by the way, where it's like the tampon hurt. The reason why is because the tampon may have not been the right size or the person was not bleeding enough. So that's why the tampon hurt to take out because it was dry. The first day you get your period, if it's not that heavy, try using a pad instead. Unless it's an active day, then like, okay, use a really small, like a regular tampon instead, just so it's not as dry and it's not as painful. It's kind of like a learn as you go, but these are just some friendly tips. Another one of my favorite hacks is just just because a pad is called a night pad doesn't mean you can only wear it at night. They're bigger, they're meant to collect more, I just feel like it's more secure and it just gives you more peace of mind because they are so big. And obviously if you're a heavy bleeder and you have a really heavy period, definitely probably one of the best hacks you could use. If you don't bleed that much, you don't have to use a maxi pad, you know, there are thinner pads. Now the days leading up to your period and even the days after or whenever you just start seeing discharge. If you don't know what discharge is, it is that little liquid that you find in your underwear that's either like clear and kind of gooey or white and kind of gooey, sometimes even brown and gooey because it's like old blood that's coming out of your vagina, use panty liners. Panty liners are very small, tiny looking pads and they actually make them for different types of underwear. If you want to wear a thong, there's a panty liner for a thong. I think discharge is probably one of the most annoying things about being a girl, but at least there's panty liners. So another thing that is sadly too real is hormonal acne. The second I get one breakout or a couple breakouts, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's coming. When you have your period tracker, when you have your calendar and you see that your period is coming up, start taking extra good care of your skin. Maybe do a face mask, maybe do a clay mask, you know, just pay attention to your skin. Acne patches are my best friend and my lifesaver. This one is kind of a no-brainer, but just to remind you, have an emergency kit. Whether it's in your car, it's in your locker, it's in your desk, it's in your book bag, just have an emergency kit. And it doesn't just have to be a period emergency kit. Just put in whatever you think you might need. 
need at one point or another. I have a specific video that is a period kit if you want to go check that out and I have another video that I recently uploaded that is an emergency kit so that's kind of a catch-all. And my last tip that I'm throwing in here as well is drink a lot of water. You should be drinking a lot of water in general but even more so when you're on your period because as you are losing all that blood you are getting dehydrated so it is especially important to stay hydrated and that also helps with cramps as well. You might feel a little bit bloated but then that's why you eat bananas. But anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did give us a thumbs up. If you have any tips that I didn't mention and you would like to share with us please help us sis out there out. Comment it down below. Now shout out of the day goes to Laura on Instagram. Thank you so so much. If you would like to be shout of the day just follow me on my Instagram and stay active. Like I mentioned this is not my first school period hack video. I have two others on my channel and I have a lot of period related content in general. I have a playlist literally titled all about periods and I also have a back to school playlist as well. Anything and everything you could find on my channel and if you haven't found it on my channel tell me what you want to see down below. I love hearing all your opinions and your ideas and your feedback but all that being said if you'd like to see more definitely subscribe for more and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!